morning. Um, we're going to go over how to do a graph in Excel. So uh, you need to have your data ready. You need to have Excel opened on your desktop app. For some reason I haven't figured out how to make a graph uh, and put a trend line into, a, into the web app. So we're going to do with the uh, desktop app. So um, here's the data. We got this from uh, from one of the, the students, okay, from their uh, FET simulation uh, gas simulator. Uh, and it was really important that you put the pressure first, okay? The pressure column needs to come first, even though that was your dependent variable, that was what you were measuring, and then the temperature is going to come second, okay? And then we're going to follow the rules from the, the previous video, which is we're going to highlight the data. We're going to go to insert. We're going to find that little icon that's got those little dots in it. Okay, that's the scatter plot, and then it's the simplest scatter plot without any lines connecting the dots. Okay, we get a nice graph that looks like that. Okay, All right, we do not forget to put in our essential chart elements, right, which is um, uh, a title. And remember, we can go up to, we can put any element, we adjust our elements by clicking on add chart element up here. Axis titles, hugely important. So Y axis is temperature. All right, now I'm going to do something uh, to the graph just so we can kind of uh, see uh, something a little bit more clearly. I'm going to extend my range on my Y axis here. I wanted to kind of show you guys. So um, you see this um, this proportional relationship between the the temperature and the pressure, right? As you increase the uh, the pressure, we have to increase uh, the temperature, right? As you increase the temperature, the pressure is going to increase. If you decrease the temperature, the temperature decreases. And we see this with our um, linear uh, the shape of our graph with a positive slope. Now I'm going to uh, add my trend line, but now we're going to add the trend line and do something a little bit different. What I want you to do is go to more trend line options. And you're going to see a menu pull up on your right hand side. Uh, the linear trend line will already be selected and that's what we want, right? So you can see our linear trend line, trend line that goes through our data. Uh, but then you're going to hit display equation on chart and that's going to put a uh, an equation with y and x on here. Um, what I would ask you to do when you turn this in is to change the font so it's bigger and easier to read. Cool. So um, I know we haven't talked about uh, linear equations a lot. And you probably haven't covered it in your math class, but this is a linear equation. This first number is the slope. Okay, so that means that uh, for every atmosphere and pressure we go up, we go up 7.7567 uh, degrees uh, Celsius. But what I wanted to really talk about is this y-intercept, right? So this y-intercept is when we track the graph all the way back down to zero pressure, right? And we, in our class, we discussed what zero pressure means. Zero pressure means that particles are not moving, right? Now, um, scientists uh, describe this point as absolute zero, when motion is extremely limited or not, things are not moving, particles are not moving. And we can find that temperature in Celsius, and that temperature happens to be negative 200, around negative 273 degrees Kelvin, right? This graph says negative 269 just because we got some errors in our in our data, but um, I really like this graph because it shows you how to derive absolute zero in terms of uh, degrees Celsius, which is negative uh, 273. So, all right. Thanks.